Being a bull python breeder living here in Puerto Rico, hurricane season is not something that I'm looking forward to. But I think this time it's going to be the first. Hey guys, Ron here with BBM Reptiles. Thank you again for taking the time for stopping by my channel. And if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and follow me along in this incredible journey of reptile keeping, specifically working with ball pythons. Guys, I got a very, very exciting egg pulling clutch to show you in this video. And I wanna give you a little bit back to our story about um, how I started working with that project. Now, um, it was actually last year, September of 2021, that I actually had the the benefit and the pleasure of actually attending an NARBC for my very first time going to the Arlington um, Expo, Arlington, Texas. And while I was at the show, um, I was looking around to see what I can actually add into my collection. And I had a conversation um, with, a, with my girlfriend at that time. And um, something that she told me was look for something that you can actually put into a quicker rotation and then the, instead of the longer um, period that most likely would take if I was to purchase a hatchling. Now, just to give you an idea, if you were to pick up a female hatchling, um, raising that female up could take up to three to four seasons or three or four years before you actually start seeing a, a clutch, if you're lucky. There's other chances that it can even take longer than that. So having someone explain this to me that's not even in the reptile hobby but just someone basically i would say out of the box giving their opinion i took that to heart so walking through the aisles in the arlington expo um i came across santiago from eye candy morphs and um there's two specific genes that I, I i do not have in my collection one is vanilla and the second was hurricane and when i saw this adult breeder female i was like that's the one that's the one i have to get and I made the transaction with Santiago, and from September, when I actually um, went to the expo, it wasn't until the end of October of 2021 when I got the snake here into my hands in Puerto Rico. Now, I like to basically acclimate most of my snakes, especially when it comes stateside, because remember, I'm in a, a tropical, warmer climate than what basically um, they're used to, specifically when a ball python comes from the States. As you know, if you are a breeder or a reptile keeper, you um, basically have heat taste within your racks. But because where I live, the temperature is pretty high and I run off of ambient temperature all year round. So to get a snake acclimated from when it comes stateside to here to Puerto Rico, I have to give it at least 30 to 45 days um, on a specific heat map. Now I have a rack that I actually use that I prepared for basically trying to acclimate whatever snakes that I actually import stateside from here. So it gives it, it gives it that chance to basically get used to what my room ambient temperature is. But I gradually basically take them down to that. So it's basically a month. So it wasn't until November at the end when I actually pulled them out of that separate area that I also use as a quarantine. It wasn't until December when I started putting that female into rotation um, with my breeding projects, December, 2021. The turnaround on that project was under a year. You know, think about it. Um, having that clutch laid today um, with the 55 days, hatch day should be around August 1st. August 1st would be the 55 days of the incubation period when I would expect more or less either to pip or may, I might even cut. But the thing is, is that it's under a year and with that time frame. Um, I'm looking at basically the, 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 the hatchlings to come out the eggs and already gone through the shed and even the second meals way under the year when I actually picked up that snake. Now, that's a first for me. That really is a first for me because like I said, most of my females, I always acquire them as hatchlings or basically if I produce them myself. But if I actually pick up a hatchling from somewhere else, it would take me at least three to four seasons before I actually see a clutch from that female. Now being a little bit more aggressive and looking for a breeder sized female, it also has its its drawbacks because basically it's gonna be a little bit more pricier than what a hatchling would have cost. But basically, like I said, 
um, I'm fighting against time basically with a specific project whatever decide to work with as how soon I could produce it to basically work for the projects for myself and also basically to feed the market um, of the demand of that specific more so it's something that you have to toy around with and sometimes you got to take a risk it's a it's a high risk that you're not guaranteed the returns but if you do you break more than even and I'm happy to say that basically this female laid for me so I'm I'm I'm, I'm I'm not even breaking even I'm actually going above that and I'm so excited about that well anyway let me show you the the eggs this is that beautiful female lesser vanilla hurricane see the hurricane swirls right there looks pretty cool now let's just get her off the eggs set her to the side now it's pretty simple as a matter of fact from what i'm seeing here let's see if we could work with the the lighting excuse me one second i'll make this a little bit more okay one two three four five six eggs now the important thing is to mark them up so so i know which way they're lying and now I have to candle the eggs to see basically how they came out. Okay, now I'm going to start. I Like I said before, I like to mark the eggs. Me personally, I will rotate them. I'll make sure that basically um, I have to find the right angle of where the, um, the embroil is facing. And um, I like to have it that way. Now something that I want to actually notice... Or I noticed and I wanted to actually mention is the way these eggs look you can see those dents right there that to me indicates that these eggs were laid a lot more sooner than what I thought so usually typically most of my ball pike dines they start laying in the morning but when they have these indents like that it gives me the impression that actually this female laid her eggs yesterday and the other way I noticed it is obviously how a little bit complicated it is to separate the eggs so this is gonna be a tricky one if I cannot separate the eggs then basically I'm just gonna to have to lay them as they lay but because this egg right here is facing at an angle pointed up there could be the chance that it could get in contact with the top of the egg box and I don't want that so let's see if i can actually separate this egg without making a tear there we go now this is the one that's bothering me this egg right here because of the position that it's in so i gotta see if i can actually wrangle this one off if not i am gonna have to leave it as is because like i said but the problem is is that i know that eventually if the embryo or the bubble is in this, this area it might end up floating up here and like I said before, I really don't want to have that happen because there's a possibility that the embryo, embryo could drown. So I want to avoid that. So even though there are other breeders that might say that that's not an issue, I'm not going to take that chance. So I'm going to be extra cautious and let's see if I can actually separate this egg. Now this is where patient comes into play because if I actually pull this too wrong or too hard, there is that possibility of tearing the egg. And that's not something that I want to happen. So the other ones, I'm gonna leave them as is, but it's this egg this specific egg that I have to make sure that I'm pulling off and I literally have to play with this like I said in earlier times I wouldn't even have this problem if I would have caught the the female laying the eggs earlier but because of what I mentioned as a matter of fact you can see that right there that tells me that basically this egg was laid earlier so 
Let's see if we could tear this one apart. Not tear it, pry it apart without making a tear. It's all about the roll. Let's see if we got it. I think we're almost there. There, oh my God. That's what I wanted, okay. Now, I'm not even gonna bother with the other ones. So, let's candle them. Okay, let's see how we set this up. I ended up separating them. It took me a while, but I was able to actually separate each of the eggs without the issue of worrying about tearing them. So, six eggs, super excited. And we'll see you in 55 days. There is a different way that each individual person decides how they wanna work a project. Sometimes you gotta rely on gut feelings, but also it's good to get someone else's opinion that's outside the box. And maybe they'll give you a vision or a different path that you should take um, to work whatever projects. Anyway, guys, thank you again for taking the time for stopping by my channel. Again, if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and follow me along in this incredible journey. And until the next time, I'll see you in the next video.